I'm just going to wait for some attendees to kind of join and then I'll start my my part. And do we interact? Can we interact with them at all? Yeah, I'm going to, um, I will let them know that that is an option. <clears throat> all right, I'm just going to go ahead and get started here. Welcome and thank you for joining our webinar today, Asking Experts Insight Series. Today's session focuses on an exciting one, Workday Rising 2024 recap and key insights from our experts that joined. My name is Tracy Thompson and I will be facilitating today's session. This webinar series is designed designed to provide you with direct access to our experts. So just like the other ones, feel free to unmute yourself and ask any questions or you know, any input from the conference if you joined, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, before we jump in, I just wanna share a few tips on Zoom. I know probably everyone <laughs> knows how to use it, but it's still good to go over. So you should see a Zoom toolbar for ask a question or raise your hand. If you have a question, you can use um, the ask a question feature or if you have a comment, if you need any assistance, click on raise your hand and I'll connect to help you. Again, we do encourage you to ask questions throughout the presentation unlike other webinars you may have been to. Um, if we don't end up asking a question that you may submit, we'll try to get to you at the end. Uh, we will also send out this recording and presentation within 72 hours. If you experience any audio issues, you can access your audio and test your audio when you're already in the meeting. Um, just use the, the microphone logo to join audio or to ask a question or comment, just go ahead and click mute, unmute. Um, again, we do encourage you to unmute. So we hope that you do and speak, speak directly to our experts. And with that, we have today's presenters, Justin Medicus and Mark Wagner. Justin, do you wanna start off with a short intro? Sure. Hey guys, I'm Justin. Um, I'm responsible for our overall platform delivery here at Armadino. I've uh, spent the last 10 years in the work the ecosystem focus on focusing on helping companies transform uh, their back office using the Workday suite of products. Look forward to this one. And I'm Mark Wagner. I'm a, a director here in, uh, at Armadino and our tech consulting practice and I've actually been here for, for 14 years, and for the last seven years, I've really focused on uh, Workday products, specifically adaptive. And so, you know, I've been involved in, in hundreds of implementations, and uh, I'm really excited to dive in here, and I'll be kind of throwing on the adaptive lens um, as we talk through the topics. Awesome. Thank you both. We're so glad you're here. So just a short agenda here. So we'll go over some key insights from uh, the conference that we all went to, um, some AI-driven press release summaries, overview of some current initiatives and strategies with the partner network, um, some key highlights from the release, and any questions that you guys may have at the end. So Justin, I'll just go ahead and kick it off for you. All right. Thank you. So Workday Rising this year was certainly interesting. So I've I've been in this ecosystem now for, as I mentioned, just about 10 years. Um, the first Workday Rising that I went to back in 2015, maybe, um, was light years away from what it was this year, right? So I think officially the largest Workday Rising ever was 18,000 people um, in Las Vegas over a couple of days. Um, and there was a whole bunch of things going on. I think we're going to talk a little bit about a couple of the themes. There's one prevailing one. I think everybody's going to be, uh, it's not going to be a surprise on what the, the largest topic was. Um, but really cool, right, back in person after we're getting through through COVID and all, all those things, um, to see so many people, a lot of people we've worked with for years and just never met in person. Um, it was a great time to connect. Uh, it's exhausting. I think anybody that was there would understand that. Um, for Armanino, it was also really cool because it was our largest rising. And our team, um, as you guys can see, is growing. Um, and so to have all of our team members in one place kind of supporting our vision is super cool. And also the first time uh, as a Workday customer. So Armanino is both a provider, a service provider, of Workday services, but we are also a customer. Um, and so for our internal teams to kind of go and see what's coming and quite frankly, the very tools that we use every day to do our jobs, um, how we can make our lives better. So 
lot of cool stuff going on. I mean, on the fun side, um, we had a caricature artist um, at our booth, which was uh, awesome. Uh, it took five minutes. Um, you sat there. He drew you on the tablet five minutes, and it was done. It was super cool. I think a lot of people appreciated it. There were also some other cool booth things. There, were, there was a magician. Uh, I think he will always live in infamy. Um at one of the other partner booths that was just fantastic. So it was a lot of fun. Um, but let's kind of transition over, Tracy, a little bit to some of the things that we heard and learned um, from Workday. So this shouldn't be a surprise, but the overarching theme of Workday Rising this year was focused on AI. Okay. Now, I think we've all heard this, and I think the message is is clear that AI is here to stay and, and you know, all the fancy things that it's going to do and, and help us do our jobs. This was a little bit different, though, of an announcement. So Workday is officially branded um, their artificial intelligence effort into Illuminate, okay? And so that that is what, what Workday is calling and embedding it into their, their product suite. Um, well, there are a couple interesting themes that I that I personally took away from this that it's a little bit different um, than than some other some other messaging that comes out there. And I think part of this comes from me being an accountant and a realist. Um, so a couple of things to highlight. One, Workday's focus on AI is not about replacement. It's about enhancement. OK, so it's looking for those areas that are often the highest risk, the highest touch, um, just the, the, the parts of a process that can slow you down. That's the part that Workday is focusing on. And it's not necessarily a pie in the sky focus. Okay, so they've come out kind of out of the gate with very defined use cases that meet the need of both HR, finance, um, and operations type of organizations to help in some of those areas that, you know, that take a little bit more, more effort. And so we've all heard the terms generative AI, you know, automating AI assistant, chat bots, whatever you want to call it. So some of those themes still kind of prevail here. They, they are the same. They are the tools. Uh, they are the next generation. But how Workday is addressing it, I feel like it's actually, it, it's pretty unique, actually really cool. So just a couple of things I'll highlight um, before we move on to the next one. The first thing is because of the way that Workday works. And so for those that use Workday, they understand everybody's on the same version. Everyone's using the same um, release and that's across the globe. Okay, and so although that's a really cool sales thing that, that Workday can tell everybody, it's a meaningful thing because it's a single set of data using the same tools, the same um, sources. And so Workday has an incredible number of real transactions that they can leverage across the globe to create some of these learning type of models. Okay, so when I say it's not pie in the sky, it, it's based in real transactions. Uh, and I think they threw out a number, something like 800 billion transactions. So pretty pretty good set or base to, to kind of learn off of. So that's that's the first thing that I think is, is, is different. The second thing is they came out with very specific use cases that they're attacking first. So these are not just concepts, right? They're not saying, hey, look, Use AI, you can automate your process. You can automate your AP. You can automate um, your hiring process, right? We, I think as, as in, this is the accountant that comes out in me says, yeah, right. No, you can't, right? Um, and so you need a good foundation. Workday provides the foundation for us. You need a good data model. Well, Workday also provides that for us. Now we can start to do some really cool things around it. So I'm not going to go into the detail of some of them, but some of the ones that kind of caught my eye um, both as a leader, but also as a user of, of the system. Um, one is around expense reporting, right? Taking pictures of receipts, workday knowing, hey, you you use you you went to a meal 
um, at 8 a.m. in this place and it knows that that's breakfast, right? And it translates that automatically into an expense report um, just with me taking a picture of my receipt, for example, okay? So something real tangible, something that takes a lot of time, especially if you travel a lot, take the burden off of you. Um, the second one is the recruiter agent, which, which is super interesting. Um, I think we all realize that we're in a competitive market still for talent, how we go and find it and, and then ultimately retain it, super important, right? And so leveraging some of the AI around job descriptions and um, you know, social media tags, things that are you know, way, way past my time um, to find and recruit people. Another really cool, but really tangible, a real problem that they're trying to solve. <sighs> All right. So I, th I think I think I kind of talked enough on that. Mark, is there anything anything else here that you wanted to cover in terms of what you heard at Rising? Yeah, I think the press release that we have a link to and you all will have access to shortly is definitely something you want to dig into and take a, a look at. But kind of a preview there and, and just to hit on some of this is, you know, what are the, what are the three top areas they specifically call out? Right. And so accelerating common tasks with regenerative A.I., so expediting content creation, Justin, you were talking about receipts and summarization for things like job descriptions, talent highlights, messages, uh, knowledge articles, contracts, so on. So that would be one, one area they definitely hit in the press release worth reading about more on. Uh, the next one is transforming the entire business process with AI orchestration. And so Illuminate can anticipate and streamline common business processes to really transform the way work gets done. And then finally, delivering real-time AI assistance in the flow of work. So the new Workday assistance, Assistant facilitates seamless, intuitive assistance across HR and finance tasks and allows employees to be um, to focus on more strategic work. And, you know, I think some people have this kind of feeling or, 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 or perception that maybe, you know, this fear that AI may be very disruptive or replace jobs. And we're really just feeling the first raindrops of the incoming AI storm but I want to frame it a little bit differently. And I think, you know, I'll frame it around the first keynote that they had. And that was Zach Brown, who is actually the CEO of McLaren Racing. So if there's any F1 fans out there, that was pretty exciting to see. I think he even missed a big race um, where they where McLaren uh, did very, very well, but he missed it to be in attendance. Um, so it was a really good conversation about Workday and, and the F1 world. And it really sparked uh, an analogy for me regarding AI. And so we're looking at the car, right? This is the car, it is the technology, and this analogy, the technology you're using, the Workday technology. And the driver in the cockpit is all of you out there that we're talking with. Um, and, you know, that's the finance org, the HR org operations. And the drivers, right, they have data constantly being fed to them in their ear, and they have their support teams feeding them that information. In our case, this could be information, there may be KPIs, financial performance metrics, market trends, and so on. And this is really the information you need to be competitive in the race. And, but gathering that information can be really painful. And it requires very repetitive tasks to get that information put together. Um, and AI, but specifically I'm focused on uh, the real-time AI assist. Well, that's going to allow for really lightning quick summarization of that data and productive insights. So AI won't be replacing the drivers. It's going to act as an assistant providing you the latest necessary intelligence. And this really is going to shift the focus from aggregating data and working with data towards having the data available and making strategic business decisions. Most notably, AI is going to allow for a driver, um, you know, it's going to give the assistance with that information, but it's going to also allow the driver to know when to hit the DRS for you uh, F1 fans or, or not, the drag reduction system. And that's going to allow you know, folks to hit that top speed and pass others in the competition. It's worth noting that at the end of the day, it's not the driver or yourselves um, that's going to be replaced, right? These are the folks that are still going to be hitting the gas, making the decisions, engaging the DRS, and that's never really going to change. So that's just something I want to kind of share as a highlight um, as we were talking through AI. All right, Olivia likes it. I appreciate it, Olivia. An F1 fan. Yeah, I'll I pass feel back like to you, F just. F1 is one of those things that gets uh, no credit unless you 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 see it live and in in person. Um, TV does not do it justice at all. 
you're either all in or you're all like you're, you're obsessed or you don't know anything about it too i feel like yeah i know to appreciate it i've just never never um never seen one live so i, I probably cooler than i think it actually is so the second theme um that was was apparent transparent for me is the number of partners that were in attendance at Workday Rising. So I mentioned I've been been at this since since 2015. Um, Workday is making a very conceited effort to grow their partner network. Armenino is lucky enough to be a part of that network, but it's not just about the services partners, the ones who help companies deploy and select and optimize, but it's also products. It's software. It's you know, different industry specific solutions that meet the needs of those industries um, and bringing those partners together. So it's very obvious this year as we're walking around, kind of talking with other partners, um, understanding what they do, the needs that they fill. Workday's put an incredible emphasis on growing the partner network. I think that's good for everybody, ourselves included. For Armanino, it also give, gives us the ability to kind of convey our value in, in this Workday partner network, right? And our value is focused not only on the technical side, right? Not just the system, not just Workday, not just configuration or security, but also the industry lens where we have industry experts, a network of them that understand the, the industry, that understand the pain points, that understand the nuances that make that industry what it is, right? Bringing those resources to the table uh, to apply best practices apply their their knowledge and then also bringing the functional people to the table right so you know myself i i can classify myself in this bucket as well uh, i consider myself a recovering accountant right i sat in the role i have implemented workday as an end user i've implemented workday as a customer now that's why i help companies implement workday as a partner and so bringing this cool tripod of technical industry and functional expertise you know, allows us to carve our path in the Workday Partner Network. And I thought that was really cool to see that expand this year. I remember, you know, back in 2015, not to date myself, but, you know, Workday Rising being a very small conference room, not conference room, but conference center. Um, and and now you look and Workday wouldn't even be able to, to step foot in there. And that, that I think is really cool. And that kind of highlights the growth that we're all on as we work, you know, move forward on our, on our journeys. Yeah. And I think, and I think Workday highlighted that quite frequently. They, they want everyone out there, third parties, you know, ISVs, partners, they want everyone to build solutions together. You know, they want to build this, this framework. It's, it's uh together, right? It's, it's, it's everyone building cool new things, solving new problems collectively. Right. And so they really want to bring that community feel to it um, and start to allow, uh, open the gates, if you will, and allow you know others to get involved and to figure out what are the problems we're all trying to solve and, and, and go get them and forge new relationships, not just with Workday, but with you know all kinds of different partners, all kinds of different ISVs. So I, I agree, Justin. That 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 was a, a, a I don't know if we heard that messaging last year. Um, so I think it's a very very good shift for everyone, especially customers. Agreed. And I kind of preempted myself here, but I think what makes Armenino unique in the ecosystem, I, I've highlighted this already, so I won't I won't belabor this too much. But, you know, part of the big reason why I'm here and, and doing what we're doing is our ability to to bring not only the system implementation to the table, but also everything that comes around the system implementation. Right. We all know a technology deployment is not just about the technology. It's about the people. It's about the process. It's about the change. It's about the adoption. Right, those are typically the areas where an implementation will will ultimately reflect whether it was a success or not. And I think that's something super important to keep to keep top of mind. All right, Mark, on to you. Over to some of the more tactical um, progressions Workday has made in in the latest release. Yeah, I think you know there was a lot of excitement about you know twenty twenty five and the future. Um, and, and, and the things going on at the conference itself. Meanwhile, there, there are a lot of engineers and folks working really, really hard to get a release out. 
last Friday. And so that release is here. It's in the wild. Um, it, it's real. And it, we're, we're still kind of understanding all the the, the, the ins and outs of it ourselves. Uh, we have to have a good feel for it after a week. But, you know, I do want to throw out the safe harbor. You know, there are some items I'm going to be discussing here, um, you know, uh, high level at the moment. There's going to be an opportunity to be uh, more in the weeds with us, which we'll see in a slide in a moment. But, you know, the timing of all of these things is always up in the air when we're talking roadmap and we're talking about uh, technological advancements. So just a heads up there. And so, you know, one of the things and I'm I'm, I'm seeing things for the, the, the adaptive lens and I'm really, really excited about the things that are coming out. And so I'm just going to dive in uh, about the three top areas where I think adaptive has evolved and it's out there. It's at your fingertips right now. You could start to play with this stuff. Um, the predictive forecaster, speaking of AI, right, is a, a a big piece, right? So this is new functionality. It's powered by machine learning. And the predict predictive forecaster leverages historical data to populate specified forecast versions with machine learning predictive data. Uh, and you even have the ability to get in there. You have a lot of levers you can pull, and you can even pick. Uh, I think they call them different different models, right? Um, you can pick different models. You can learn which model you're picking. But that model is going to have some seasonality and all kinds of different variables baked into it. Um, and there's even a way to look and see, you know, how uh, how accurate was that model, right? So the predictive forecaster, brand new, really exciting. We did have anomaly detection before. That's continuing to evolve. But I think predictive forecaster is that next step in the adaptive world for AI. Um, we also have, we're getting closer and closer to that um, you know, that that holy grail that is a truly frozen version in adaptive. And so this is something called the archived versions. You'll see that in your versions now. You could check the box. And so this new uh, new feature enables you to make changes to actuals, structures, linked accounts, all of that without losing the integrity of leaf level data in historical versions. So uh, we're still testing it out, but it's really, really getting close to saying, yeah, when I archive this version, it's done. I, I can't do a whole lot to mess with that data, which is fantastic, right? Because um, it truly is what we think when we think of a frozen version, archived version, something you could look at in three years that's not going to move, not going to change. Uh, report bursting is another one. And so this is the ability to schedule and burst reports to a group of users and even directly attach Excel books. And so that is is very cool. Um, the The... You know, the, the interface for that, they're, they're, you know, we'll be able to see and interact with that and start to play with it. And so you can actually send an Excel book to someone, which is very cool. Um, one of the things I, I'm jumping ahead here to, to 2025 that I saw that I was really excited about at the conference was when we do have the AI Assist enabled, you actually be able to kind of look at a dashboard and you could then, you know, eventually you can imagine where this is going to go. You can look at the dashboard, you can find your anomalies find where, you know, something doesn't meet a budget threshold, you can ask adaptive to summarize that. Uh, and then you would then take that data and right then and there, you could say summarize to PowerPoint. And I think eventually you can say summarize to PowerPoint and send to, uh, you know, applicable users. So uh, that's really, really cool. Again, I'm jumping ahead right now. We're in the first phase of report bursting. And then finally, the one I want to highlight is right back to via Office Connect. So it's a functionality that will essentially replace Excel interface for planning. And it's going to allow for data to be pushed from Office Connect to Adaptive seamlessly. So use case there, if you have a complex model and it hasn't quite made its way to Adaptive yet, you haven't invested the time to get it there, um, you know, you can actually have a section where the results of that model land. And within those cells, those are the cells you can then push directly into Adaptive. Right. So those offline models are slowly coming online. Right. The data is going to push directly to adaptive. Uh, eventually, you'll want to actually build the model in adaptive. Uh, but but this is kind of your stepping stone to get there. So those were the big pieces for me, Dustin, that uh, Justin, that I uh, um, really got excited about. Nice. Yeah. And, and on the adaptive side, especially, I mean, the, some of those things you talk about the predictive nature of a forecast and how much time is spent just collecting data before you can even start looking forward. You're constantly looking backwards. I think that's 
I think that's pretty neat. I, I feel like it's an area that's ripe for innovation. So I'm glad they're, you know, they're putting some focus around it. Absolutely. You know, on the, on the, on the platform side, um, there's a lot of focus around just making lives and jobs a little bit easier, right? Worked has been pushing out these concept of hubs um, and they're continuing to do that in, in this latest release. And just, it, it's kind of a, a personalized view. It's a persona based view. Um, for somebody to go in and do their job and get insight, visually appe you know, appealing way of, of kind of working. And so I'm excited for them to continue to kind of push those things out, but also kind of double down on some of those areas. So for those that you know are not leveraging like the journal anomaly um, type of functionality, right? Where um, Workday is enhancing that capability and taking it a step further, right? So for those that are not familiar with it, um, the kind of first iteration that came out maybe a year or so ago focused on um, just identifying anomalies, right? Find the thing that looks weird and highlight it, right? And highlight what looks different about that. And that that that's a good first step, right? But now they're taking that second step um, and they're, they're allowing you to take action on it, right? So instead of just recommending and surfacing, it's actually performing, right? It can say, hey, look, I found this anomaly. You book this thing here, but it, every other month you've booked it here. Would you like me to rebook it for you, right? And by a simple click of a button, the task is complete. So you think about those little areas of time saving that we all know, especially as an accountant, right? Everybody loves, you know, the month end reclasses. You think about a, a way to be more efficient, get out of, in front of it, ahead of it, I mean, again, as an accounting nerd, I mean, those are the kinds of things that are super cool. You know, you just don't, the, it, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and you're, you're booking your journals and T accounts and all these things, you'd have never thought of something like that, right? And it just, um, pretty cool, pretty cool things. Thanks, Justin. Yeah, and moving, in, move, moving on here into uh, continuing the conversation of 2024 R2, we actually want to extend a complimentary release review to every, anyone in attendance here today. And so the things that, that Justin and I are talking about, um, you know, we want to actually get in there and, and, and provide you all with a, a detailed, well, you know, we'll be one-on-one -on -one and, and have a conversation and we'll walk through and we'll actually tell you what is coming out of these releases, right. Uh, in detail. And so expect those sessions to be about one hour. We'll, we can provide recordings afterward we want you all to come ready to learn. And so please email us if you're interested in this. Um, we would love to connect. We'd love to walk you through this and, and, and show you exactly what came out last Friday. So you can start tapping into all this cool technology, all this technology, you know, years ago that we never would have expected to ha have the ability to tap into. Let's talk about it. Let's have a session together. And so, you know, you'll get the slide deck after this and feel free to reach out to us and we'll get that set up. All right. That was awesome. Thanks, Justin and Mark. Um, this is kind of completing our session today. If anyone had any questions, feel free to put it in the chat for Justin and Mark, or feel free to jump off mute if there's anything you guys wanted to cover or um, any other additional items that you learned today that we wanted to expand on. Give it a minute. All right. Well, it doesn't. Oh, no. Thank you. We got to thank you. So you're welcome, Jane. Thank you for coming. Cool. Well, I don't think there's any questions. So we'll um, pass out this recording. Um, we hope to hear from you guys on the re complimentary release review. And we hope you have a good day. Thanks, Justin and Mark. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks, everyone. Thank for you. the rest of your week. Have a good day. Bye bye. See ya. Bye.